Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tippet for Monday evening, September 18th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center, your local officials, and your local weather office. Well, we'll get to Maria in a minute. First, we're going to briefly talk about Jose. This continues to be a hurricane with winds of about 75 miles per hour as of the last estimate from recon data earlier today. And you can see the center, though, has become exposed, and we don't have an eye or anything like that, and the core has become eroded to the point that you can actually see the surface center, or at least you could a few hours ago. There's a new burst of convection near the center now, and the system is actually moving into an area of lower shear up here you can kind of see this anticyclonic pocket developing aloft and this will allow perhaps the maintenance of some sort of convective core for at least a little while longer the gulf stream goes sort of like this and so it's still over warm water the cold water is still up here so the system has a little bit of time still to maintain some intensity before it starts to weaken but once it gets north of this gulf stream area towards southern New England, it will begin weakening over the cooler water and uh, will uh, complete likely uh, extratropical transition during the next few days. NHC currently estimating that by day three, this will no longer be a tropical system. Uh, but don't really concern yourself too much with that as the impacts from the system will be basically the same regardless of whether it's tropical or not. And the track still takes it close enough to New England that uh, a tropical storm warning has been issued for portions of Rhode Island and Massachusetts and uh, tropical storm force winds are possible here. The track has shifted a little bit away from the coast uh, compared to the last couple of days and so this is still uh, a substantial distance away and so the core and worst conditions in the storm will not be impacting land based on current expectations. Um, however, uh, gusty winds disruptive weather uh, potentially from Long Island on eastward are possible. This is not expected to be a huge problem, but definitely could be disruptive and certainly dangerous at the beaches, and you definitely don't want to be in the water along any of the coastlines here, even the areas where it's not warned, given the rip currents and high surf uh, that can be life-threatening. Uh, but not expected to be a huge deal here as it can, uh, weakens and curves off to the right, and then you can see it does this little loop and hangs around, and this becomes relevant to Hurricane Maria as far as her steering down the line, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Speaking of Maria, here she is, uh, an amazing hurricane. This, this feels eerily similar to when we were tracking Hurricane Irma a little bit farther north here uh, just a couple of weeks ago. We have another amazingly rapid intensification event of a hurricane that was just uh, proclaimed a hurricane yesterday and then in the 24 hours since then has become a major hurricane now with winds of 130 miles per hour and the data coming from the aircraft earlier was uh, nothing short of incredible. We had pressures falling very very fast, um, several millibars per hour and this has likely continued since the plane left. The plane was gone four to five hours ago as of the making of this video and we're still waiting for a new aircraft that will be in there probably about an hour after this video is posted and it will assess the intensity that Maria has currently because it has clearly continued to strengthen. We can see on infrared satellite imagery that the eye, which was not apparent this morning or even this afternoon, has now appeared with ferocity late this afternoon and evening and this is now clearly an extreme hurricane and winds may be in excess of the estimate of 130 miles an hour but the plane will will tell us uh, regardless um, perhaps a disaster coming unfortunately for Dominica we have the the eye coming right toward the island and it's looking less and less likely now with every passing moment that the eye wall will avoid the island and a direct hit looks likely here this is the radar loop from the Lesser Antilles showing the core moving in this general direction it's actually kind of more like this and uh, at least a glancing blow if not a direct landfall here on the island looks likely at this point and this could get uh, closer than uh, you might think to Guadalupe here as well as uh, the system is moving significantly uh, more toward the northwest here uh, today and uh, this is gaining latitude quickly so this is going to pass pretty close here to both Dominica and Guadalupe and uh, we'll continue toward the U.S. Virgin Islands and uh, St. Croix is right in the line of fire here. It's going to be close enough to the northern leeward islands to cause significant issues with warnings up, both hurricane and tropical storm warnings for all of these islands, and then Puerto Rico down the line. This is the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. You can see the hurricane warnings in red, and uh, for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands as well. And as this comes toward the west-northwest, Additional strengthening is possible here, and uh, really the only thing that could stop it at this point is an eye wall replacement cycle, and uh, the way you get those is when you have a concentric 
ring that forms around the current eye and forms a secondary eye wall that then chokes off the inner one. That does not appear to be happening now. There are multiple bands in here, but none of them have become large in radius and wrapped all the way around the inner eye wall. So unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be likely to weaken the hurricane in the short term. But by later tonight and tomorrow, given the small size of the eye, it's very small, about eight miles wide at last estimate, that's usually not very stable for very long. Usually an outer eye wall will form after the eye becomes that small. So we may see a brief weakening period when one of those cycles begins at some point tomorrow, though those are very hard to predict. But again, like we talked about with Irma, the eye wall replacements are usually deceptively dangerous because although they may weaken the top winds for a short time, often it just means the wind field gets bigger, impacts more people with stronger winds, and then the hurricane usually intensifies again after the cycle completes anyway. So these are usually bad news. We haven't seen one yet. Unfortunately, none is happening in time to bring the winds down before it hits Dominica, and they're likely to feel the full force of the inner core here in the coming hours. Again, here's the forecast, and this gets, again, very close to the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico by uh, Wednesday morning and afternoon, and uh, preparation should be rushed to completion here. This could be a direct hit anywhere from Puerto Rico to the Virgin Islands of the eye, and we're seeing how strong this is. This could be, you know, a Category 4 or 5 even hurricane by this point, depending on how the inner core evolves over the next day or so, and uh, this is as extreme as it gets. This is, you know, we were just talking about Irma, it seems so short ago, but this is just as bad uh, for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands this time. This time it's not Barbuda, this time it's farther southwest, and these islands could see the kind of destruction that Barbuda saw from Irma. So please take this seriously. Storm surge again, 69 feet above normally dry ground is the most deadly threat from this storm. Inland flooding due to mountainous terrain, mudslides up to 25 inches of rain in Puerto Rico, and of course the extreme wind in excess of 150 miles per hour is possible here in the inner core. The good news is that the core of the storm is currently quite small, so it doesn't, the extreme winds are confined to a small space, but again, eye wall replacement cycles are likely when the eye is this small, and that will likely cause the storm to grow a little bit by the time it gets farther to the northwest, and so there's no guarantee that uh, all of these islands couldn't receive hurricane force winds at some point as the core passes nearby. So uh, do take this seriously and be safe. As this continues onward, it could get quite close to the Dominican Republic where a hurricane watch has been issued, and then again the Turks and Caicos in southeastern Bahamas could also be uncomfortably close to the storm as it passes close in the day four to five period, but again there's less certainty here, and the storm could be really anywhere in this area, and uh, whether it's uh, over the islands of the Turks and Caicos in Bahamas or not, remains to be seen, but we'll be tracking it closely, of course, and preparations should be underway there just in case it does so. As this begins to turn more toward the northwest in the longer term, again, questions arise as to whether or not this could threaten the United States. Again, the pattern remains rather complex. This is the European Ensemble mean showing the 500 millibar flow up in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. For day five, this would be on Saturday. This is where the hurricane would be, and if, if you assume that Maria uh, can be safely assumed to be somewhere in this area, just north of the Turks and Caicos or Bahamas by day five, which it likely will be. Of course, the question is where does it go from here? The leftovers of Jose, again, Jose is doing a little loop here, and it's hanging around, so this little trough that you see here uh, southeast of New England is actually what's left of Jose, and this could save the United States from a direct hit, given that it leaves a, a door open. You've got a little ridge here, to the east of the hurricane, and then you have this trough to the northeast where Jose is, and uh, so the flow provides a nice pathway just right up to the northeast here, you know, near or west of Bermuda, whichever it is, uh, would only be a threat to Bermuda in that case uh, because that path is open. However, the door is not fully closed to United States impact given that we have this big ridge building in over the top, and depending on exactly where Jose is, how weak it is, and whether or not this ridge is able to connect to the New England Ridge, which would then force the storm northwestward, we could see different tracks here. So there is still a possibility that the storm gets forced into the United States in the longer range. I would say it's less likely than a turnout to see at this point, but it's on the table. And so folks in the eastern U.S., not an imminent threat here, uh, Maria, right now, but it's, it's worth tracking. And again, make sure you have a hurricane plan ready. It is still the peak time of the hurricane season. We've seen what Harvey and Irma have done. And uh, please make sure you're prepared in case that kind of a storm comes your way. Uh, it may or may not be Maria, uh, but we'll keep an eye on it just in case. Right now, a recurve out to sea seems a little more likely, uh, but 
cannot rule out a track toward North America here in the longer term. Still too much uncertainty. So that's uh, Maria and Jose, both storms impacting land. Maria um, affecting Dominica and Guadeloupe and Martinique tonight, most directly with outer bands and tropical storm force winds affecting islands farther away from those three. And then again, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico are coming up next on Wednesday, and this could be an extreme event for some places. So please be prepared and be safe, everyone. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.